while they were in stocks and bonds. And the earthquake, the prison doors were open and they were set free. You know, God's word tells us that he's got some wonderful things in store for Christians. And I can't wait. I asked him, Bobby, how he was enjoying retirement. He said, I'm really enjoying it. I said, somebody asked me, preacher, when are you going to retire? And I said, oh, probably about 80. And then I'll be a greeter at Walmart. But I said, I sure hope Jesus comes before then. Don't you? Yeah. Amen. <sighs> you ever ask, why is that story in the Bible? I do that a lot. When I study a passage of scripture, I say, okay, what, what's, what's so significant about the story? And I asked that question about this. Well, why is this story in the Bible? I think here's what it is. It's a story about two persecuted preachers who were having terrible times, yet through the midst of all their terrible times, they brought people to Jesus. And there were some great conversions. The jailer and his family came into faith in Christ. Others also believed and met with Paul and Silas and rejoiced. You know, thankful living can bring others eternal life. You ever notice how, how it's so easy to pull people down by your attitude. You know, there's some folks that you see them and you go, oh my, I'm going to stay away from that person today. They walk in like this. And then there's somebody else that walks in like, they go, oh, it's okay. You know, you, you, know, you know the story, it takes less muscles to smile than it does to frown. We need to have a thankful attitude. The attitude of gratitude, Ken Crockett in his book, Making Today Count for Eternity, tells us the attitude of gratitude is important for several reasons. And he lists just four. First of all, he says thankfulness acknowledges that God is our provider. And you know, when we become Christians, we're to give everything to God. Everything. And the toughest thing we have to give God is our pocketbook in it. Or a fault. We have a hard time giving that to God. But you know, when we do give it to God, the problems are God's. And lots of times we've had some financial problems, and I say, well, you know, you got all the money. I can't wait to see how you're going to handle your problem. And you know what? He always does. David understood that. He said, once I was young, and now I'm old, yet never have I seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. My father has a cattle on a thousand hills, and silver and gold's all his, and I'm his son. So we have such great promises in God's word that he's going to be our provider. So why not be thankful to him? He's not going to let us down. A second one he says is thankfulness prevents a complaining spirit. We live in a thankless world, don't we? I can't tell you as a teenager how many times I get upset about things. And usually I would decide to take it to my dad. And my mom would just kind of look at me and smile. And I didn't like that. I want somebody to sympathize with me, you know, and say, well, I understand. So I'd go to my dad. And I said, Dad, I don't like it. And life is not fair. It stinks. And he would look at me and would get that real solemn look on his face. And he'd say, son, life is not fair. And you know, I thought about it, he's right. Life isn't fair. You see, we live in a world that uh, the prince of this world is Satan, and he's going to do his very best so that life will not be fair for you. So thankfulness will help us not to be in a complaining mode all the time. So I encourage you, be thankful. A third thing he said is thankfulness creates a positive outlook on life. One of my favorite stories about thankfulness is told about the old commentator, the Bible commentator, Matthew Henry. After he'd been accosted by thieves and robbed of his money, this is what he wrote in his diary. He said, let me be thankful first because I was never robbed before. Second, because although they took my money, they didn't take my life. And thirdly, because although they took my all, it really wasn't all that much. And fourthly, because it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. That's pretty good stuff, isn't it? 
So for our life and our health, we need to give thanks. For our unseen wealth, we need to give thanks. For good times and the bad, we need to give thanks. For the glad times and the sad times, we need to give thanks. The fourth thing he says, thankfulness invites joy to dwell in our hearts. You know, joy is a state of mind. It's not really an emotion. Nehemiah said that the, strength, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. So joy is kind of up here in our mind. I make a decision. I'm going to let the joy of the Lord just come over me. Compose my entire, entire body, my whole mind, my thoughts, and that's what's going to come out of my mouth. And you know what? Sometimes it's so hard for us when we see somebody, somebody maybe has had some good things going on in their life because they went out. The only reason they're doing that is because their dad took care of them or set them up for life or blah, blah, blah. Or they just had it made. We need to look at people who the good things are happening to and say, Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad that's happening to you. And that's hard for us to do, isn't it? Because it's not fair. I don't deserve the things that are going on in my life. What are you trying to teach me, Lord? Have a life that's full of thanksgiving. You know, if you were here Wednesday night, I passed out a little sheet to you. And I had alphabetized A through Z, 26 letters. And I asked you if you could put a something you were thankful for by each side each letter. And I kind of helped you a little bit. We said, A, thankful for all my friends. And I gave you lots of time to fill it out. I think I gave you two minutes to do that. And then I said, the whole point of this exercise is for you to understand there's at least 26 things you can be thankful for. And my challenge was this Thursday as we celebrate Thanksgiving Day, before we just sit down and eat and watch football or whatever else we do or get together with our family, let's take time to be thankful. Let's take the time to be thankful for the many good things that are going on in our lives. You know, I haven't had the privilege to travel to too many third worlds, but I've been to Southeast Asia. I've stationed in Guam, and I've been places that were a lot different than where I was raised. And you know, we who live in Little Rock, Arkansas are wealthy compared to many third world people. And we forget that. I'm so glad, I'm so thankful that I've been born an American. I'm glad to be an American. I'm glad to live in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I'm glad to be an American Christian too, aren't you? I want to encourage you this coming Thursday, no matter what's going on in your life, take time to thank God. And if you weren't here or you didn't have the time to finish that alphabet, alphabetized list, take the time to do it. And when Dad or whoever says the prayer before you eat, take the time to be thankful. We have some guests that will be coming from Oklahoma to be with us. And I've already thought, you know, we're going to be thankful. We're going to take time to be thankful for what God's done for us. And that's my charge to you. Be thankful in everything that you do. Would you stand with me? Father in heaven, thank you so much for thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, today for all that you've done. We thank you, Father, for sending your one and only Son to become a human being, to descend, to become one of us, and then to die for us. We're so unworthy. But yet, for some reason, he looked upon us as worth being worthy. Thank you, Father, for loving us that much. And I do pray especially, Lord, that you help each one of us as we leave this church today that we'll think about being thankful this week. And Lord, Thanksgiving shouldn't be just one day out of the year. We need as Christians need to make it 365, 365 days out of the year to be thankful. Bless us now as we go our separate ways. Give us a good day and a good week for Jesus. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen.